Hey, my name is Helen Dixon. I'm going to walk you through how to propose a member organized session or workshop at ASOR. There are four types of ASOR sessions on the program. I'm really only going to be dealing with the second and third of these member organized sessions and workshops, but I think it's critical to understand the difference between ASOR sponsored sessions, which are permanent fixtures on the program and designed to contain all the papers we get, and member organized sessions and workshops, which are really designed to be more focused on specific topics, approaches, or periods. So if you decide to propose, you would make an initial application using a Google form I'm going to walk you through. That initial application can be one to three years in length. If you decide to propose for two or three years, you'll be asked to designate themes for those different years. So those might be case studies in one year, approaches in another, you might have different periods you're gonna focus on, but the idea is to show how the session will evolve and why we should give you the go ahead for multiple years at a time. You will then be able to reapply in future years up to six years in total, and that can be six one year applications if you just want to play it by ear. At the end of six years, you can decide to apply to become a standing session. But once you do that, we have the right to change the name of your standing session and it will move to an open call for chairing. So it will no longer belong to you in the same way that proposing a member organized session might. At the moment, we have no standing workshops on the program at ASOR, nothing that is uh, designed to stay in place like standing sessions are. From my years of watching workshops evolve, I've come up with these three ways that I see workshops really being useful um, on the program, but I'm sure there are more. Uh, these three are academic life beyond scholarship, whether that's in the classroom or work-life balance. Um, workshops that focus on communities of practice can be very effective, and those that need sort of non-traditional space at the annual meeting itself. So if you're doing anything hands-on, you might think about proposing it as a workshop. In general, the idea is no one in a workshop is speaking for more than 10 minutes at a time. These are not papers. This is a different way to explore content. The call for member organized session and workshop proposals is online at ASOR.org. And each year, it's a different Google form. Um, you'll want to first start by checking the list of sessions and workshops already approved for the year you're approving. So that's going to include all the standing sessions and also any member organized sessions or workshops that had multi-year proposals that were approved. So you want to keep an eye on where you might be overlapping already approved content on the program. What you're really here for is the application form, this bold red hyperlink. And that link takes you to a simple Google form that will remind you of some of what's in this video in that first couple of paragraphs. You're going to check whether you're proposing a member organized session or a workshop. And then you're going to fill in your name as chair. In general, I would say undergraduates are not eligible to chair sessions at ASOR. And with graduate students, especially MA students, the program committee has really been pushing students to consider co-chairing with a more senior scholar. And this is to protect graduate students from having to reject the papers of senior scholars down the line. All right, so if you have someone else kind of on your team to share that quote unquote blame, um, it won't affect your career if you end up with a, a dicey situation. So this is something to keep in mind. You might still be sharing in the spirit of the thing. It might be your idea. But if you can sort of get a senior scholar to sign on, we'd love to see that on the program committee. You will propose a name as it would appear in the program and decide whether you're applying for one, two, or three years at this stage. Um, you will want to consider your own funding situation, whether you have the energy to recruit papers each year. So, you know, maybe you don't want to chair a session the year you're defending. If you look at the calendar of, of how session chairing works, maybe that doesn't make sense. Um, and if you've never worked with your co-chair, uh, that's something to consider. Maybe just start with one year and see how you like it. Um, remember also that we're changing our relationship just out of necessity to the Society for Biblical Arch for Society of Biblical Literature and the American Academy of Religions. So we're not changing the time of year of ASOR. We will still be meeting uh, that same November week we always meet. And in 2020, we'll all be meeting in Boston completely normally. But in 2021, 2022, and 2023, 
uh, ASOR is struggling to get hotel contracts um, in the cities that SBL and AAR are meeting in. So they, they selected cities like San Antonio or Denver where we've had bad luck. So we are looking at some great cities. These are all tentative. You know, we're working on getting these contracts in place. I think they're great options. But you do want to be clear with your co-chairs and any folks who are proposing papers as part of your application that this is going to be a little different. Uh, make sure everyone knows what they're getting themselves into and would be willing to come to ASOR. So you will be asked next to fill in your maximum 200 word session or workshop description. This is where you put your themes in each year and this is really what goes into the program as that initial um, session abstract. But this is not actually a text limited field. So once you've done that 200 word description, you can hit return and add a little note to the program committee. This isn't written in the form, and I don't know, I might push to change this in future years, but this is what a lot of folks do if they want to explain how their workshop is going down, what they're envisioning, why this might appear to overlap with an existing session, but really doesn't. Anything you want to say there, you're welcome to. Uh, then you'll need to include a list of speakers, right? This is to help the program committee imagine what your session will look like in practice. At least four are what we're asking for. You can't move on and submit the form unless you've got four in place. And there's room for six. So in each case, you're offering the name, institutional affiliation, and a proposed title. And what I'd recommend is actually talk to actual people and get their support. Um, We've seen proposals in the past that just do a sort of fantasy lineup of, you know, all Hall of Famers on the topic. Um, that's not convincing. We want to see that you've got people uh, that you've had a conversation with who support the idea of your session. Now, there's are not commitments, right? Um, you want to be clear with your proposal uh, as you address folks for this proposal. Um, you can you know, use this as a selling point to recruit. You're not committed to my session. Uh, you can change your mind later. You don't have to know if you've got funding. I'm just looking for support. But the flip side of that is uh, you want to be clear that they will actually have to apply through the open call when the time comes. We have sometimes some confusion about am I not guaranteed a spot on the program? Whenever possible, we also would recommend that you get actual paper titles generated by your speakers. Now, this isn't always possible, especially when you're talking about workshop presentations, right? So think of the paper title slot as what you might see on the program when that person's name is announced, right? If they're giving a regular paper in a regular session, you want a full title like you would see. If they're giving a workshop contribution, you might just describe their role. So facilitating a conversation on X or doing a lightning round of ideas from the audience, something like that to help the program committee imagine. Here's a little behind the scenes. So if your session or workshop is approved, this is what happens. You will review all random submissions from an open call. I don't think it's always clear to folks um, even if you reject papers, you don't have to worry about this because the program committee really provides a sort of concierge service where we try to place any paper with strong academic merit elsewhere on the program. So everyone submits and can name a first and a second place, uh, second choice session to which their paper would go. Um, and we often work beyond that to a third or fourth choice trying to find a good fit. That means if you're chairing a session, you may get asked to review second rounds of papers. So even if you've hand curated exactly the papers you want, we might come back a week or two later and say, hey, would you consider adding a couple of more, a couple more papers that could fit? And this is always going to be up to you, but it's worth saying that to a certain extent, the number of papers you have at ASOR really determines the shape of your sessions. Um, if you have uh, four papers in a session, they can be 25 minute papers. If you have six papers in a session, they're forced by necessity to be 15 minute papers. Um, and the total range of possibilities uh, is pretty large. You could have in the end only one session of four papers that you're chairing at ASOR all the way up to three full sessions of 18 papers total. So this is another reason co-chairing is nice. You can share the load of, of chairing those individual sessions. 
Other points to consider. It's totally fine to propose your own paper when you submit your application. We don't consider that bad form. Um, you do want to become familiar with a source participation policy. The short version of this is you can give one paper, one significant academic paper, and have three appearances on the program. Um, in practice, it's more subtle than that. And the points that you'll need to know for this purpose is you can give a paper in your own member organized session. You can give a short presentation in your own member organized workshop. And in fact, the one paper rule does not include workshop presentations because they're designed to be less than 10 minutes long. So you can give a paper and a workshop presentation for that reason. Workshop presentations don't take your one paper. Finally, you can chair two sessions at the same time. So that could be two member organized sessions or a member organized and a standing session. The timeline is always super crunched, right? We finish the meeting, we're all exhausted in November, and by December 15th, we have to know what we're gonna do next year. So I apologize for that. It's all dominoes stacked on dominoes because the call for papers for all papers across a source program will open January 15th and close February 15th. So this is designed to have new session chairs reviewing papers in March and sometimes into April. So good luck with your proposals and please feel free to email me or contact any of the program committee if you've got further questions.